my, my name is Johan Horn. I work at uh, VU University, that's Amsterdam. Um, my work is in social robotics. I look into the AI of robots, for instance, for uh, emotion regulation or uh, creativity solutions or a theory of mind uh, that the robot has about its use uh, or moral reasoning. On the other hand, we also look into the effects on the user. So there's a lot of social science, psychology involved on the one hand, and on the other hand it's quite technical because we try to translate whatever we find from uh, user experiences to translate that back into the AI. And that's basically what I'm all about. Hello, ik ben Alice. We've worked with uh, care as our application domain. We also work in education as our application domain. Those are the major fields. But what we make is actually so so generic that it could go into any service profession. But these are two of the areas that have the most need actually because there's a lot of uh, fine-grained work that has to be done tailored to that one person. Although on the other hand, we fall short of hands that actually do that work. So robots can have a real function there in taking care of all the maintenance work, rehearsal work, while human beings such as the teacher or uh, the nurse can do the more fine, refined and advanced work, the more special kind of work that people sometimes need. Uh, the, in the interesting thing about how people respond to robots is that at first they are a bit reluctant, you can expect that because they think, well, I'd rather prefer a human. Um, but after they get experienced with it, they get used to it, and that doesn't take even that long actually, they are going to like it and very soon after that they are actually bonding with the machine, liking it for a friend, um, taking care of it, and it's not really age dependent. Um, yeah, it's more dependent on how isolated you are, uh, how lonely you are, then people are attached to it quite quickly. Um, also, people are a bit shy, they attach to the robot quite easily because the robot can, uh, can be predicted, right? It's, it's, it's uh, one of the USBs of, of, of a robot is actually that it doesn't judge you, and many people like that. I mean, the robot has no idea about you, doesn't say how you have to behave, how you should do, um, it's very patient, will repeat everything for you twice and you don't feel ashamed that you're perhaps a bit stupid or a bit slow or not looking nicely and those are actually things that are non-human qualities that people love about robots. Huh. I have hardly en encountered any child that wasn't fascinated by a robot right away in, in all those years of experience, I only saw one girl that once said, I'm really afraid of it and I don't want to interact with it. All the other kids just love it, they, they try it out, they want to experiment with it. Um, they assume all kinds of human qualities, so they actually ask you, <laughs> what does it eat? <laughs> and then you bring them to the realization, yeah, it just needs a little bit of power, and oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they love to interact with it and it works really well uh, for instance, for teaching, especially when you, you pick up the right tasks and you have it done by a robot, they benefit extremely well from it. Uh, that also has to do because it's a one-to-one -one relationship, uh, whereas with a teacher, he's usually in front of the class and talks over your head. But they say with, uh, with robots, you cannot actually ignore it because it looks at you, right? And it's very patient, tries to repeat whatever you have to learn. And you see that the learning curve is actually improving after three or four times repeating with the robot. Exploring the fact that many people, well, you see this in gaming a lot, right? That game developers try for the most realistic pictures. Uh, we have a lot of theory about realism, actually. And one of them is that realism may be important, but only if it's relevant. So just enhancing realism of a machine is no use to the user. It might look nicely, but it's no use to the user um, as long as there is no concern, no goal, no target for it. Uh, what is important, and I always call these the three requirements of a social robot, it should be physically present, it should have two eyes and a voice. And then people will tell it about every anything. Uh, we, we even had experiments with let's say shoe boxes 
and the shoebox had two eyes and it had a voice and people were actually becoming attached to it. They, those were, I have to uh, admit, uh, quite isolated people. Um, but they loved telling to the machine, which had no intelligence at all, uh, all the things in daily life, right? Uh, like a digital diary. And that already worked. So uh, it doesn't matter too much how it looks, if it's human enough, it, if it has just enough stimulus to evoke a human response, it's actually something people will relate to. Well, I, I always, uh, it's not from robotics, but I always give the example of if you do a car simulation, it doesn't matter too much that the other cars are yellow and red blocks uh, passing by, but what is important is the traffic flow. So you don't have to model a complete uh, Mercedes or BMW, but what you have to have is that the, the flow of driving and how cars are moving, that should be exactly the same as in real life. Uh, with robots, it's that the robot is at its best, and in that case should be realistic, if it is asking the right open questions. But there are many aspects that you don't want to have uh, too realistically because then people will respond to the robot as if it were human and then they start to be reluctant for instance because humans cannot always be trusted so the fact that I can see it's a robot and in that sense it's not a realistic human is one of its great selling points because then I will confide in the robot those things that I don't do not dare tell to another human being what I see as uh, the future of social robots is that we uh, get more data in the cloud, we get more data analysis, more patterns. We have the Internet of Things coming and all this information should be fed back to a user who is an analog person, who doesn't understand all these digital uh, bleeps, digital readings, bar charts, whatever they have on their mobile or is hanging somewhere in their environment, uh, what they actually need is a translation of all that information into something that humans can consume, that they actually can understand, that is human communication. And a social robot would be the perfect interface between everything that's happening on the internet, the internet of things, the cloud, and translating that back to something that people can relate to. And I think that would be really important, especially for people who are not really technolo technologically gifted, uh, to, to have that piece of equipment in between the digital world and the analog world.